Hey folks, once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Just a quick heads up that we are recording these call and place our recordings on our YouTube channel. So if you want to be, don't want to be recorded, you may want to drop off now. And with that, let's start with our topic of discussion, which is uh, latest updates in Azure load testing. So um, Azure load testing is a service which is there in GA for uh, quite some time and they're adding some new features. So I thought uh, I was working with a customer on some of those. So I thought let's talk about it. And uh, the features that we're going to talk about is first of all, testing how you test private endpoints. Private endpoints does not mean just the private endpoints from private link. It can be VMs, AKS running in the VNet. Second, we're going to talk about how to optimize Azure function. There's a built in feature that uses uh, sorry, uh, that uses Azure load test. So we are going to take a look at that as well. And then uh, we're going to briefly discuss how to use parameters in load testing. And I want to show like how that is made possible with the use of um, managed identity, make it simpler, getting parameters from, um, let's say, key vault. OK, so that's what we're going to be discussing. So first of all, let's talk about um, Azure load testing of private endpoints. If you remember when this service started, it was all about testing endpoints that are running in public cloud, okay, which are publicly accessible. And you know that that was the right thing to do. But a number of customers have workloads that are uh, available only to their internal cust uh, customers, like internal service or over the internet. Let's put it this way. So they cannot, they don't want to expose these workloads to internet. And anyways, if you test it from the internet, that won't be uh, the right way of doing it because they are accessed only from, um, from the internet. So that's where this capability comes in. What it does is uh, it can uh, test your private endpoints that like private endpoint to a web service, or function, uh, and it can um, test uh, your uh, endpoints, which are um, like virtual machines. You may have a web app running on virtual machine, or you may have an AKS deployment that is internal only. It can access that as well. How does it work? What it does is it drops a instance of the load test servers into your subnet. So what you have to do is, and let's go to the next slide. What you have to do is you will have to, um, you will have to provide a subnet for this to work, and that subnet is delegated to the load testing service. Other thing is uh, that that subnet has to be open to the internet because it uh, load testing needs to talk to the VM that are running. And at this moment, it requires certain network configuration and you have to keep that in mind um, that that network configuration has to be there. Otherwise, this service will not work. Another thing is the address space in that subnet, and that's the most important thing, has to be greater than the number of agents that you want to run. So let's say that you have a web app that you want to run with 100 agents, OK? And then you have to have more than 100 address space in that subnet, actually 104 plus. And here is why. Because four addresses are taken by Azure in every subnet for um, if its own use. Got it? So that's why it's important that when you are allocating the subnet you have that address space available so as let's say if you increase the um, load or you know in in that you, you won't have any issue that's one thing second thing is what it does is in that particular subnet that it will deploy a set of virtual machine which is your test engine it will deploy a public ip address it will deploy nsg and load balancer and things like that so it will deploy all these things 
in that you will actually see a VM scale set pop up that is going to be um, used to generate the load. Uh, and behind the scene, it is running, I think, Azure Batch because that um, VM scale set says Azure Batch. But anyways, you cannot access that VM scale set. You cannot make any modifications to that VM scale set. The only thing that you can do is you can, uh, using the load testing engine control, you can change things like you want to um, add the load or, uh, I mean, you know, you change test parameters and things like that, okay? And, and once you generate the load, everything is uh, the same. I mean, you will see the test result, how many requests were successful, how many failed, all of that. There is no change there. But um, this one, this thing, you have to keep in mind that um, uh, this uh, subnet is delegated to um, Azure load testing. One other thing is you don't want to enable any IPv6 addresses. That is uh, not allowed. Okay, any questions? So let's go on to, um, I will go over the other stuff uh, in a second, the other two topics, but let's go on to a quick demo. And so let's say that we have this, okay, so I am here in the, Azure load testing. Hold on. Okay, so I am in this resource group and I have a load testing resource that I have already created. I'm not going to go uh, into the detail like how it is created. It's very simple to create. It's the load test where uh, you need to look at like how you're going to be um creating your, your uh, resource and where you're going to be creating your test okay so um let's say we create a url based test if you remember initially it was only um gmx based test where you have to have a gmx script and you provide that script and that's how you do it not anymore now you can have a url based test that uh sorry go ahead Question. I, I just muted the participant. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Willie. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Okay. So, as I said, let's say the start with the test, and this is your test plan. You can call it uh, test APL or something. And then we are going to say that, uh, yeah, run test after creation, debug mode. Okay. Debug mode is something very important to know. Sometime you only find issues when you are running a load test of some sort, okay? In that case, you wanna see what is request response and it's sometimes it's hard to do. This allows you to do that. So it's gonna capture your request response and you will be able to uh, see um, the request and response data and it will, uh, kind of provide more information to locate the issue, okay? But in that case, only one instance of the engine is run and uh, things like that, okay? So that's that. Um, and let's move on. And then uh, we are not gonna do the debug mode right now. Okay, test plan. I mean, we're gonna add a request. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, use my function, actually I have a web app that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go into my resource group. There is a app service. This is my app service. And this is the um, URL. So that's the URL I'm gonna be using. This is the URL, get method. I'm not adding any parameters and we will talk about that in a second, add. And next thing is 
what are the parameters and we will come back to it in a second and let's talk about the load okay this is where you define the load you can make it step spike number of engine instances that's i was talking about so let's say if you want to go with like 45 engine instances okay just keep in mind that you have to have space in the subnet for I mean, you have to have at least 49 addresses available because remember, every subnet four addresses are taken by Azure. Got it? So you have to have four plus whatever your engine instances. I'm just setting it one test duration. I'm going to make it five minutes. Um, what are the total requests? Uh, and, you know, so this is that. And this is interesting part. This is what I'm talking about, private. So that's where you say, this is my VNet. This is my, uh, oh, sorry, the wrong VNet. Um, this is the subnet. So I'm going to use a load test subnet and I can disable public deployment. But just keep in mind, create making it, uh, disabling the public IP endpoint doesn't make it entirely private. You still have egress. Uh, and a certain networking requirement that you have to meet. So just keep that in mind and uh, take a look at those. But this is how you do it. You set it up and the rest of the stuff is kind of a test criteria, what metrics you want to capture, um, when you want to stop test. This is pretty standard, but I just wanted to focus here. This is the network piece, okay? So number of agents, number one, that has to be less than the address spaces available. So let's see how many address spaces we have available in that particular. So let's go to that resource group and uh, let's go into that virtual network. This is my virtual network. This is my subnet. This is my load test subnet. So we have 251 addresses um, available there. So, and just keep in mind those addresses will be taken only when you are running the test okay that only happens then okay so let's um, you know go in here and next and we are just going to keep the default options it says validation passed and i am going to create the test and you know, uh, just keep in mind, it takes a few minutes to create and run the test. So for example, if you refresh it, refresh it, this is the test. So it will take a few minutes to um, kind of execute the, so if I go in here, you know what it's gonna say? It's gonna say it's provisioning. Now let's refresh it. Also, it's actually uh, uh, taking all your input and uh, making a JMeter file. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A, a JMX uh, file for you. It creates all of this and, and it's creating all of this. And another thing until this one comes up uh, and a bit uh, to mention, because sometimes you might have a multiple uh, load tests. Make sure when you use the same subnet and addressing, you're not running two at the same time in that one, then it will take you know, space that's, and IP exactly. addresses. Yep, yep, yep. That's a very good point because what's going to happen is if you are running two tests, both are running 40, 40, uh, 40, 40 agents, you now need 84 address yeah. space, not 44. Exactly. That's a very good point. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because you might have multiple, ad, you know, tests over here yes. and they might conflict and run at the same time, all of them, and now you'll be out of addresses and you have problems. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, since we uh, don't have time for this entire thing to run, we will come back to it. I want to show you a test that has already ran. So this is the test. And what I did, one other thing that you can do in the test, and we will take a look. So this, these are the test runs that I have done. One was stopped. Now, and, Naveed, do we have uh, somebody, Karan has his uh, hand uh, raised? Yeah, know, please, please, asked. go ahead. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for this. Uh, uh, I just have one question. So uh, when you said, let's say, for example, 45 agents, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to create, so uh, this uh, uh, load testing has 
multiple like 45 agents and these 45 agents each have private endpoint to the target resource so uh, do we need to go and explicitly set the private endpoint on the target resource for example yeah. i have a okay yep, yes. you're probably going to show that is it yes actually thank you very much that's my bad i take full responsibility for it i should have shown you um let me this is my uh, where is my app service this is my app service and that's bad on my part i assume this is the um sorry where is the networking sorry. setting sorry um and if we go into setting we go into networking if i go into networking you will see a uh, inbound access one private endpoint so yes i have created that private endpoint so folks one step back yes i went into the app service and i pre-created the private endpoint and if you look at this private endpoint it is in the same subnet or same vnet where the load testing is going on if you remember um, sorry here this is the this is the vnet so it has two subnets one is the pe subnet one is the load test subnet and i have dropped the endpoint here and you know one interesting thing i just want to mention since we if you remember there were 251 addresses available now it's only 250 why because one address was taken away by agent here there were 251 uh, addresses initially available but since i have created a private endpoint so there are 250 addresses available so one taken by private endpoint so remember it's not going to create the private endpoint for you. You have to create the private endpoint yourself. If you have an AKS it, and private AKS that has a private endpoint anyways, or a VM that is running, that's a private endpoint anyway. But it's a web service that you want to test privately. You create a private endpoint, drop it in that uh, VNet somewhere, not in the same subnet where you are running the load test in a different subnet. Does that address your question? Yes, thank you. So that's how this thing is working. And sorry, I totally missed that point. So these are the test runs. Okay. Oh. okay, so these are the test run. We ran a test. I mean, I was playing with it. I ran a test. So this is how it will output will look like, you know very simple web service i mean the point is not to load test it the point is how you can test private endpoints and private endpoint means private endpoints for services like app service through private link or vms that are private or aks instance where you're running your microservice that you want to test privately got it all of that so let's see if anything happening to our test. So this is test APL. So it is executing. If I go in and it is still kind of running things, it will take a few minutes. So while this is running, let's go back to our Azure function. So I have an Azure function as well. And by the way, that is not a private Azure function. That is a Azure function that is public. And that is using flex consumption plan. So let me go over there and um, and let me just quickly switch back to the slide deck for a few minutes just to set the context. OK. So what Azure function load this optimization does, it is a part of the functionality of Azure function that uses Azure load testing to test different um, sizes or different uh, kind of for your Azure function to see what best fits. Okay, And that's how you decide, OK, you know, this Azure function. Uh, and, and, you know, if you remember from the Flex discussion, you can go with like two uh, GB size or four GB size of memory. So what what size fits best for you? And that's what it picks up. So let's see how uh, we can do it with an Azure function while this thing is um, still running. So now let's quickly switching the thread. We are in, I have a flux, a flex function. So it's a flex consumption function. Currently the instant memory size is uh, two, um, 
2.2048 MB or 2 GB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run performance optimizer. Just keep in mind it's in public preview. So for that, I am going to create a test profile. Just keep in mind if you don't have a, a load testing resource, you will have to create one. Since I have already one, it just gives me the option to create a load testing profile. This is the profile name, whatever description you want to give in. So what you do is you pick different instances. For example, for this one, I will say run 300 concurrent requests first. And then I will pick the same one, run 400 concurrent requests. Then I can pick the larger one and I say 400 again. And then I can go on and I will run 500 concurrent requests. OK, and for that, OK, what is uh, I'm. Uh, and that's how I will test it and I will add my request here. This is my current request. Say hello. This is one function I have. I can if I have multiple function, I will be able to pick up. This is get all of that and I add the request here. This is the request and I can run that test. Just keep in mind what it's going to do is it's going to run. Basically, and uh, what is the load configuration? And once again, here you can do public and private. I'm just doing public here. OK, and then it's going to generate the load run five minutes. What it's going to do is it's going to run number of configuration that you have. It's going to run one test for each of those configurations. So these configuration like it's going to run one test for five minutes where HTTP concurrency is 300. Then it's going to run another test for five minutes where HTTP concurrency is 400. Then it's going to change the instance size and run a test for 400 concurrency and then 500 concurrency. So you see what I'm saying? So it will run those tests and it will then um, give you the result. So what I'm going to do is just for the. Okay, let's create it. Let's start the test while it is running. I am going to check the test profile. I have already ran a test a few minutes ago, so let's see what were the results. OK, so look, it ran all the tests. Every test ran and then it gives me the best performance. Look, throughput when the throughput was the best. OK. Just switch back to the refresher. Um, I want to go back to the previous one that I ran eight o'clock this morning. Here it is once again. Sorry, guys. So you see this gives you the best throughput. So think of it. Now you can run these tests and find out where is your best performance. OK, given you can use different SKUs in flex consumption. It gives you that and you can run for different. Uh, if you have multiple function, you can run for multiple function. Just a very simple thing not to delve into the complexity of the function or anything, but just give you an idea. OK, what would be the best case scenario for you to run this test and get the results? Got it and it ran for 46 minutes. Why? Because it runs one test, five minutes per test, and then some prep time. So that's why the total time is 46 minutes. Any questions, folks? Okay. Yes, please go ahead. So I noticed the the um, two gigabyte four hundred test is lower throughput than the two gigabyte three hundred. Uh, are there log files or something that you could dig into to see what was the the issue? Right. Yes. It? yes, you can do that. I mean, this is just in your app service or whatever function you have that may perform better. Yeah, you can look at the log file from your function. How, I mean, it may be needing more memory uh, to respond, things like that. So that's why that may be the case. Um, so yes, 
I mean, you can look at the log files and see what was the result. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks. I have one question. So the instance memory here is the uh, memory that is uh, allocated for the uh, load test agent. Is no, it? no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is the function. So this is, let's go into the function. This is flex of plan. And it has, this is the memory set. This is the oh, flex. Sorry. Yeah. So this test is specific to flex function where you have the instance memory of 2 GB or 4 GB. So you want to see like where where this is, um, where the best, uh, I mean, where the best Go. performance is. Got it? Got it. Yeah, thanks. Any other question on that topic? Okay, so now let's quickly go back to the last item, which is the ability to access parameters or environment variables. Um, just keep that in mind that there are two types of uh, parameters here we are talking about. One are simple parameters. Let's say that you want to send some data in, some journal headers or things like that. That you can send it, um, um, you know, just adding it to the uh, UI or putting it in the script, JMS script, and I will show it to you in a second. The second part is secrets. Let's say that you want to pass a uh, OAuth cookie, you know, um, the authorization header. Send that information that you want to put it in a key vault. So for that, you have to do a little bit of preparation. First of all, just we always do have a key vault and you put in a secret over there. So I have put a secret. This is the secret, and if I go in, I'm going to copy the URL of the secret. Second thing you want to do is you want to go in and do one of these things. Either go to the load test, sorry for switching screens, and, and I am going to go into the load test. Where is the load test? Yes, so this is the load test and this is the identity. You have to do one of those things. You can either assign managed identity, system assigned managed identity to it by turning it on, or you can do what I have done, do a user assigned managed identity. And then as a last step, you will have to give that user assigned managed identity, um, like if we wanna see role assignments, what I have done is I have given this user assigned managed identity, remember, evolved secret user access. With that, what you have done is you said, okay, this, this identity has access now to the key vault secret read only. Okay, once you have done that, you can take the URL and let's, uh, if we go back to our uh, load testing, Resource. I'm gonna go to the resource group one more time. Sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the load testing. Sorry, guys, we are running very close time. I just want to show it to you. And let's say we go into tests, and I'm just gonna pick an existing test here, and I am gonna say. Um, I'm going to edit it and it's going to come up. And these are the parameters I'm referring to. If you are using environment variable, it's very simple. Just the curly brackets and name of the environment variable. So you want to name it env1. This can be environment variable env1. You can use it. But if you want to use a secret, okay, you want to use sec1. And this will be the URL of the secret. And what it's going to do is at uh, runtime, it's going to use the managed identity of the test rig or te your test instance to get that particular secret, and that's how it's going to use it. Okay. And by the way, you can change the scripts as well and add it there as well. So that's totally okay. But that's that's how you will do it. Any question? We are right on time, folks. 
And yes. I, mean, I just want to yes. mention uh, one note over here. Uh, even this is a, a cheap service, like $10 per month and get uh, 50 virtual user hours to do that. You need to watch for because sometimes you make a mistake, mistake and do a huge amount of agents that runs and and long hours testing and some customers comes with a huge bill after that. So please make sure you use the right amount, even if it's a cheap one, but when you have a huge amount of agents running and a huge amount of tests, then it will become uh, very expensive. So uh, just <laughs> precaution here in a bit about, about this one because it could go very, very high. Don't absolutely. overdo it. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to keep an eye. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, folks? Okay. So if there are no questions, thank you very much for joining and hope to see everybody next week for another Azure Power Lunch. Thank you. Thank you, Navid. Very informative. Thanks thank a lot. You. It was great. Thank you. Very informative.